Thank you, Senator Blunt Rochester. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome, Mr. DeBar. Um, you've heard from some of my colleagues uh, voice their concerns, but I also want to be very clear about my concern over the gutting of the Minority Business Development Agency. At his hearing before this committee, I personally asked Secretary Lutnick if he opposed dismantling the MBDA, and he said yes, and then gutted the agency's leadership and core functions anyway. And it's been reported that the agency has gone from 100 people to one person. Um, I've heard they've been fired. I've heard they're on leave. Um, that broken commitment undermines decades of bipartisan work. It was created by a Republican president in 1969. Organizations like the National Urban League fought to codify the agency, and ultimately the goal and what it has done is expand economic opportunity for communities in my state, as well as across the country. I was proud to join Senators Cantwell and Baldwin in writing letters opposing any effort to dismantle the MBDA. So my questions, first, uh, I have a yes or no question. If you can't answer it in a yes or no, just say I can't answer it. Do you support the gutting of the MBDA? Uh, I don't have enough information. You, uh, could you talk about what steps um, that you would take to invest in minority-owned businesses that have the potential to transform our economy for the better? Uh, as, as Deputy Secretary, my role would be primarily, besides the direction of the President and, and, and the Secretary, is to execute on the authorization and the appropriations of, uh, of the Senate. I actually served as a de deputy secretary in my state, so I understand uh, the role of deputy secretary. I also understand that it's an opportunity to also provide wisdom, direction, advice. And I know you've worked in many different capacities, public sector, private sector. In your work and in your career, have you worked to unlock opportunities for minority-owned businesses? And what recommendations would you give to the secretary towards those goals? Um, probably the one, one time where that, uh, when, when I dealt with that was when I was under secretary for science and there was uh, a program at DOE that, but did not report to me, but there was a DOE program on the topic. I, I will follow up with, with more detail. Um, but I, I have to say, I have a lack of confidence after the secretary sat here and said he wouldn't dismantle it and now it's being gutted. Um, I want to shift gears. Um, we are, as has been said by many uh, uh, on the dais, in a competition with China on quantum. They've spent over $15 billion in quantum, public co quantum funding, far outpacing the U.S., which has invested, my understanding, $932 million in 2023. There's also a major shortage of skilled quantum scientists and engineers uh, with McKinsey stating there's only one qualified quantum candidate for every three openings. Um, and it, Doge is not helping. It's again reported that they fired over 70 NIST employees in March. This is a, also a concerning trend for a technology area uh, that has the potential to revolutionize computers and our economy, as you have stated. Are you concerned that we are not currently meeting the moment when it comes to our quantum competition with China? And what are your thoughts on this? So it's an area I know well. Um, uh, uh, I think the investment that was made previously under the National Quantum Initiative Act uh, was a very good first step. Uh, I, I uh, supported uh, in testimony before how science uh, about the reauthorization, and if I'm uh, so lucky to be confirmed, I'd love to work with this committee on that. Um, I do think that the science has now moved to the point that we could actually start building real devices, real computers. I have quite a bit of experience in that, uh, and I think this is the time to go do that. I know. I want to turn to cybersecurity as well. Quantum is a critical technology for the future of this industry, and NIST works on quantum cryptography, including encryption designed to resist quantum-based computer attacks. While these quantum attacks haven't occurred yet, uh, security experts warn bad actors are stockpiling encrypted data to take advantage of future breakthroughs called Harvest Now, Decrypt Later attacks. 
given the current federal employment environment, um, how will you grow the quantum workforce to help protect our economy from potential quantum attacks? So the secretary is very focused on post-quantum crypto efforts by NIST. Uh, we will continue and accelerate that. I have personal experience in this, in this quantum topic. The president's letter to uh, Director Kratzios also highlights this topic. And so I think we would love to work with, with you and the rest of the Senate to, uh, to try to accelerate that with the next quantum bill, uh, amongst other, other program offices. Uh, I, I will submit some more questions for the record on supply chains and also artificial intelligence. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.